Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Near Automata. It's been two weeks since the apparent death of 2B. Black box signal for your high unit 2B offline. Death confirmed. Data exchange engaged. Your high unit 9S has completed repair and reconstruction of all damaged areas. Unit is ready for reactivation. Your high unit A2 also ready for reactivation. Proposal. Illuminate surrounding area. Analysis. Units 9S and A2 are safe. No problems detected. Only one issue remains. We comprise the Yorha support system. If the A2 and 9S units are operational, we are required to attend and support. Agreed. Displaying positions of units A2 and 9S. So we get a choice here. We can either play as 9S or 2A. We're going to be starting today as 2A. So then, what happened to command? Number two, go! I can handle- No! Number four! <laughs> Activation of Unit A2 confirmed. Good morning, A2. Who are you? Tactical Support Unit Pod 042. This pod has been tasked with providing firing support for Yorha Unit A2. I didn't ask for help. Affirmative. No request was received from Unit A2. Rather, it was the final order from this pod's previous support assignment, Unit 2B. Well, it's unnecessary. Yorha Unit A2 lacks the authority to override this order. Whatever. What the hell is that huge thing? Unknown. You're pretty useless, you know that? Proposal. Unit A2 should state her intentions. Why the hell would I do that? In order to provide optimal support, pods must be supplied with data relating to the activities of supported units. Not happening. And now I'm going to be taking a teleport into the central desert area. Uh, and you'll see why momentarily. It's just going to save us some time. Also, there's probably going to be a lot of exposition in this episode, as uh, you've seen already. Unit A2 should state her intentions. What did I just say? If an attending support unit is not provided with data related to the activity of its target, it is programmed to automatically repeat the request every 30 seconds until such data is made available. Are you kidding me? Proposal. Unit A2 should state her intentions. Needlessly repeating conversations on the same topic is a waste of energy resources. You're the one who keeps talking. 30 seconds have passed. Proposal. Unit A2 should state her intentions. Stop! My intention is to beat the hell out of every goddamn machine I can find. Is that enough for you? Affirmative. Scanning and marking of nearby machine life forms complete. Goliath class enemies detected in desert area. Proposal. Goliath class enemies should be destroyed. Don't tell me what to do. Pods are not authorized to issue commands. 
Proposals are merely recommendations based on data provided by Unit A2. Proposal. Unit A2 should state updated intentions in order to secure more usable data. Shut the hell up. Negative. This pod is engaging in activity based on the final order of Unit 2B. Your high Unit A2 lacks the authority to issue commands. Look, just stay out of my way. Affirmative. You want to get killed, huh? So we have three Goliaths in the desert to fight at once. They overlevel us just a little bit, but nowhere near as bad as when the third route began. Uh, things are going to smooth out from here. It's still a tougher route than before. Uh, this fight is evidence of it. Also, look at the way the sun and the... the the uh, haze of the desert are changing. We have to watch out for the lightning legs. We need to dispel that, actually, uh, with some impacts. That did not get both legs. That's a bummer. Dodge of shockwaves. Real, uh, really have to be careful about all three of them, what each of them are doing independently at a time. Uh, like most Platinum games, enemies will not attack you aggressively from off screen. They will still take some actions, but you won't get completely blindsided from off screen at all times. So if you're focusing one down and keeping the others off screen, you're mostly safe. Uh, there are a couple of situations like that shockwave hit I took. I think that was because his attack was already in the midst of happening. I think if we switch over to the laser, we can, or uh, the, uh, the Gatling, we can spell that a little bit quicker. Just had to do some damage to it. So, 9S, let's talk about her play style. Uh, she fights very similarly to 2B. She can hold her dash to sort of glide around it. And it's not only super awesome, and I love it so much, it improves upon one of my favorite things in the game already, which is a great dash. If you couldn't tell from the Neo playthrough, from the Bloodborne playthrough, from all of my time with Mega Man X, from my gushing suggestively at the beginning of this playthrough, I adore good dashes in games. One of my favorite, most satisfying things. A dash with a good feel to it is like, ah, bliss, perfection. Uh, and 9S is, is even better than 2B's. You can hold it, uh, like I think I said, you can kind of glide with it. Produces that red trail. It's got a nice effect. Uh, so a lot of her stuff has some nice polished effects to it. Uh, her, she can taunt with square now. And it's a unique taunt, not just flicking a flashlight in some robot's face. We saw that while the dialogue with the pod was happening. And she has one more thing that we will see imminently, let's say. Uh, also, you saw me throwing the sword around. That's not something unique to her. In fact, I'm positive that I've done it before, that I've been doing it, uh, it's 2B, but I just never point out how. Uh, it's just, you hit dash and light attack at the exact same time, and you uh, will dash away while throwing your sword. It's one of those so really obscure things, class. like launching off of uh, your pod or doing the helicopter kick. Enemy machines remain in the area. It appears to be a machine life form that has adapted to the desert environment. Proposal, destroy the enemy machine. Yeah, that's real helpful. So the hazes grow thicker. There's a whirlwind all around now. Like we're in the eye of a giant sand hurricane in the desert. And I can't help but feel this super cool boss. The use of BMO to increase nuclear fusion output carries unacceptable levels of risk. And the offensive boost is offset by lower defense and increased maintenance costs. The feature was removed from the world. For this reason. Guess it's too bad I'm not a newer model. Yeah, we'll get to Berserker mode in a second. I can't help but feel like this flying 
segmented boss that you fight in the middle of uh, uh, the desert is a naked homage to uh, Phalanx from Shadow of the Colossus. Here we go with Berserker Mode. This is maybe not the best fight to be learning about this because of how chaotic it is and how spammy it is. But uh, Berserker Mode drastically increases your damage output, lowers your defense, and when you... Don't patronize me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't pod explain to her. Um, when you go out of Berserker mode, you suffer a penalty to your movement and your evasive uh, maneuvers. However, while you're in Berserker mode, you get to do crazy, crazy teleports that leave those red after images behind. That looks so goddamn amazing. Uh, this fight's really nuts, though. Um, like I say, it's not... It's maybe not the best time to be learning about Berserker mode, because it's very, very hard to avoid incoming damage. There are so many sources from so many different places. Uh, it can help you speed things along, though. Look at this! Look how cool this is! It ain't even bad, though. This is not a problem. Uh... I... I could equip the auto heal chip, uh, the one that just automatically uses a healing item as soon as you get low, but I'm fine with this setup for now. I have to find what I want to cut out in my, my uh, loadout to make room for that. In the meantime, the strategy here is just spam it when it's in the air so it will break apart and the individual segmented orbs will fall to the ground. Try to get your damage in as best you can while spamming dodge. It's, there's too many sources of damage, too many lasers all over the place, too many orbs to really easily keep up uh, and keep track of where everything is coming from and when. So just get your shit in. Once you destroy a segment, it does not disappear from the fight. It simply becomes shielded uh, and invulnerable. But the overall health bar, the Hegel health bar, goes down. It's been a long time since we have had a brand new boss named for a German philosopher. Fuck, look at this dash. It's so good. It's the best. It's not even the dash. It's every movement you take. <laughs> All right, we got that one down. We have a couple of these remaining. Oh, the other thing about Berserker mode is your health is constantly depleting. Which... Again, is a pretty big liability in a fight where damage is so frequent and so difficult to avoid. So I have a fair bit of it flying around. Uh, the shielded bits that you've previously taken out will not rejoin it when it's in the air. So you have a good gauge for how many pieces are left. Plus, you have all of their individual health bars, too. This one's right, it will be like way on the edge of the arena. Can't really go out too far into it. I think I'm gonna just see if I can top up uh, with the combat healing, the attack heal, the life leech. See if I can conserve just a couple of healing items. Not that I'm strapped for cash or restoratives, but it's always nice. Even the pod missiles really do work, especially for how many of the segments they target at a time. This is just a really fun boss, though. It's a helter skelter shit, but. Uh, this one is also, like, amazingly difficult on the higher difficulties. This is just normal, and this is already... Yeesh. One of the most chaotic fights. One of the most chaotic. We're getting there, though. <laughs> Look at this just wall of projectiles all around. Hegel's getting down there. Most of his segments are dead. Uh... Or on critically low HP, as am I right now. That's why I've not really been going back to Berserker mode, aside from the couple of times, just to show it off. We will get a better look at how devastating ni uh, 2A is in Berserker mode in subsequent fights, but right now we just need to take it easy. Take it a little bit slower. We have most of these dead. 
And of course, getting... Woo! That one actually hurt a lot for that single orb. The aerial bombardment. We have three or four of these left. This one's about to be dead. Perfect. May have actually gotten another one with the missile. Ah, pretty close. Should at least get this before. Ooh, not even sure what's hitting me right now. I gotta heal. Oh, it's that one's laser. I thought it was already destroyed. <laughs> Insanity. Okay, they take back to the air. Yep, just two of them left. It's like 5% total HP. Oh, it fell outside of the wall of the sandstorm. Boot, do -do 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 -do. Boot, do -do -do -do. No, I cannot. Acapella sandstorm right now. Mid boss fight. This is a terrible idea I had. <laughs> Yeah! It sucks that they can actually rotate that up in the sky, otherwise the strategy would just be air combo them as often as you could, or stay in the air as often as possible. Uh, this one is not the one lowest on health, but it is the closest one to me, so I'm just going to take advantage of that. Forgot though they could do that. Try to smash you. Alert. Oncoming EMP attack detected. Escape recommended. Where am I? The EMP attack appears to have caused hacking damage to Unit A2's memory modules. Hmm. So this is my memory area. But why are you here? Support units are required to monitor our target's internal systems in case of breakdown. <sighs> Next time, ask me before you go poking around in my head. This is a massive change of pace. Much less hectic, much less intense. Even the musical disparity is kind of nuts here. Ah, uh, but yeah, we will get these slightly, slightly uh, more rare hacking segments as to a A2. Now the music changes in here just a little bit. Normally you'd be called, but we'll be called to be. Continue to observe the situation and dispatch it. This is a fragment of Unit 2B's memory data. It is an order she received from the Yorha commander when she was still alive. Dispatch somebody if necessary. Was the order given to Tubi by the commander? I can't wait to get di uh, deeper into A2's backstory. Being one of the prototype models. And how absent she's been throughout the rest of this, and how different she is from the other Yorha. She's quite interesting. That gives me kind of vibes. Pod 
Commencing data sharing. Affirmative. Launching compressed conversation mode. Compressed conversation mode complete. Affirmative. Awaiting report on the effects of Unit 2B's memory data on Unit A2's self-consciousness. Understood. Updating as reference data for support activity. Now let's switch over to 9S for a bit. Looks like he's awake, Devola. Morning. Slept well, didn't you, 9S? I'm in... the Resistance camp? That's right. You've been unconscious for nearly two weeks. A little thank you for saving your butt would be nice. Where's 2B? Uh, you know that better than anyone, no? Her black box signal disappeared. Oh. Devola and Popola are rare android models designed for medical treatment and maintenance. Without the bunker, they are the only remaining way for Unit 9S to initiate repairs. Proposal. A word of appreciation is appropriate. Thanks. Yeah, there used to be lots of our models around. Apparently, we were put here to oversee some kind of large-scale system that was in place. Apparently? What does that mean? It means we don't know. All the records from that era have been deleted. Our model kind of went nutso at some point in the past. It ended badly. Most of our kind were disposed of after that, but we were spared. They used us as a sort of control group in order to ensure such a thing couldn't happen again. So yeah, we're lab rats. But at least we get to be here helping out friends. I'd like to think that we're atoning in some way for our past sins. <laughs> Try not to overdo it, 9S. Thank you for saving your butt would be nice. I thought, given the fact that it was still slow walking me, that they wanted me to talk to Devil and Popola again. Also, I feel like I'm about to get stuck on an invisible wall. Or just a really big collision. I think I only talked to Devola. Let me see if Popola has anything new to add. Thank you for saving your... Try not to overdo it, 9S. Yeah. Guess not. Oh, now I'm free to move about freely. Report. Mail notification received from access point. Oh, what's this all about? I think this is from the Council of Humanity. Which 9S knows now to be complete horseshit, but let's see what they have to say anyway. Uh, let's see, we received word of the recent destruction of Adam and Eve. They're vulnerable. Now is our moment. Hmm. So much for that. And we cannot transport at the moment.
What is that? An enormous facility that appeared from an area beneath the ground. It would appear to be machine related in origin. Further details unknown. Mobile transport platform detected in the section emerging from the facility center. So, an elevator? Now we're gonna go and transport to the flooded city for something that is fantastic. Almost as fantastic as the fact that we just learned that the pods communicate in wingdings. Wonder if anyone's tried to actually translate their text by converting it from wingdings into another font. I would be very interested to see if they hid some kind of hidden meaning or foreshadowing in that wingdings. <laughs> Because that seems like a super Yoko Taro thing to do. Uh, so in the meantime, the choice that we have now received twice does not change anything uh, long term. 9S and 2A's stories in this third playthrough take place simultaneously. And you have to play through both of them uh, in order to get the next several endings. Uh, each chapter you will get a choice to switch. So I like to alternate back and forth between 9S and 2A. Also, uh, these little bipeds seem content to cock block me from the thing that I want to show off here in the flooded city. And it's not that giant floating ziggurat looking thing. Uh, it's not Naxxramas up there. It is instead something along the shoreline. Ah, dangerous biped! I'm getting flashbacks to when 2B had the virus infection. <laughs> when the bipeds just wreaked havoc on me. Ah, uh, and they were the scariest things ever. Oh, nope, nope. You want to spoil the party too? That's fine. Oh, there's two! Ah! That's great how, the, how it freeze frames if you do the perfect dodge right before hacking is initiated. Probably get to take one or two more. Nice thing about the hacking is that it causes an explosion around whatever you hack. So in addition to dealing damage to the target, it deals damage to everything around it as well. Just a little bit less. Now we're gonna have to take that hit. Now, for what I want to show you. Uh, this is a little Easter egg that a lot of people miss. It's a flight unit that crashed. The remains of a Yorha flight unit. ID of Yorha unit 2B confirmed within the craft. This belonged to 2B. Unsent message found within memory of flight unit. Play it. This is your unit 2B. If anyone is listening to this, there's something I need you to do. If you ever meet up with your unit, nothing else. I want him. I mean, I'm sorry. Please just give him the following message. Nothing else. The time I was able to spend with you, it was like... Memories of pure light. Thank you. Nine. End of message. Oh, to be. That seems like a nice tender moment to end on. So that's gonna do it for now. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.